welcome to Virtual Concert Hall's live music channel. I'm James Welch, your host for today's show. We are connecting musicians and audiences in real-time performances and music news from around the globe. Today's program consists of community, education, and music. One of the best mixes out there to educate, inspire, and provide great experiences for young aspiring artists. Before we get started, I would just like to know that all of our programs are live streamed on multiple platforms. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all, all of them, LinkedIn even, and you know, if you're out there watching today, we have a really exciting program. And if you have any questions, please leave a question in the uh, comments and we can put them up on the screen. Our tech wizards will do that and we can answer them. Or if you just want to say hello, you know, say hello, we'll say hello back and we'll have time for that near the end of today's program. <clears throat> we are lucky to have two wonderful guests in our digital studio with us today. The first guest is the most experienced veteran with our events and broadcasts and really needs no introduction, but we'll give him one anyway. Uh, we are blessed with the wonderful privilege of having back the director of this season's Laureate Guitar Ensemble, the amazingly talented Julio Reyes. And Julio was born in Oakland, California, started the guitar at the age of five with his father, a formal musical diplomat in Paraguay, South America, who studied with a student of Augustin Barrios. He gave his first recital at 12 and at 17 performed his first concerto with Richard Buckley and the Oakland Symphony Orchestra. He's performed all over Europe, South America, and the Caribbean. As an educator, for many years, he has conducted uh, youth orchestras in U.S., Cuba, Paraguay since the late 80s, giving lectures on the life and music of Augustin Berrios at conservatories of music, college music departments, and guitar societies here and abroad. Currently, he continues teaching guitar privately, giving lectures, recitals, and freelance conducts whenever possible. In addition to all this greatness, he is the director of our Laureate Guitar Ensemble this season, and he is a three-time winner of many of our events, and we're so lucky to have him back here. Julio, welcome. How you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm so happy to be back with the family. So uh, I'm looking forward to this interview and having you get to know my buddy, Terry Miller. He's got a great nonprofit. He's done some beautiful things, and I can't can't wait to have you all know about him. Yeah, yeah, this is this is going to be wonderful, and we are going to be bringing him on shortly and um, talking about his whole operation and everything. And you know, I just I, I'm just excited to have you back here. <laughs> I, I I I think we've had you we've had you a couple of times already, like, and we've shown some of your classes and your performances and. It's it's just wonderful, um, and I I just like to mention this guitar ensemble for a few minutes here. Uh, yeah. We have we have you in New York this summer, and you know, our auditions for the guitar ensemble the the deadline's actually coming up, uh, November fifteenth. <clears throat> and are are you excited about this? I am. I'm really looking <clears throat> forward to it. Um, one thing that I I love uh, about progressive musicians and the competitions, and I'm not just saying that because. I'm on the staff now, is it reaches international musicians. So we've seen guitar players from, uh, was it from South America, from uh, Israel, from you know, piano players from Italy. So it's been great getting to meet all these different musicians from all over the world and, uh, and just play music <laughs> together. So it's been great. Yeah, we've had a lot of, uh, we've had much uh, variety in genre and culture, and we've been very blessed for that. And oh, and one thing <clears throat> also, that, yeah, the amount of little kids that are just playing mm -hmm. so well. Um, I met this one uh, classical guitar player, her and her sister, 
they're like I think fourteen and sixteen. Oh yeah. But yep. they're playing at conservatory level, and so when I met them, my jaw just dropped because they started playing some of the stuff that I play, and I've been playing, mm-hmm. you know, since the early eighteen hundreds. So it's it's it was amazing for me to meet these yeah, kids. Little, and that's uh, the Catalina. type of kid that we're getting. Yeah, she played the Barrios piece. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> and so. she played it beautifully. Yep, yeah, and her older sister, yeah, it was wonderful. It played Scarlatti, and yeah, that yeah. was just this past June, and. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's... I got to tell you a quick funny story about what happened to me on the way home from New York. I was okay. in the 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 <clears throat> gate and the person working the gate said, oh, "You're a guitar player? Play something now. I hate this lady who keeps keeps giving this announcement overhead about not having specific types of batteries in your suitcase. I'll give <laughs> you a voucher for $100 if you play right now." And so, are you serious? And so I started playing, and she announced me, fresh from Carnegie Hall, people were coming around like as if I was under no Sylvia, thinking that I was some world-renowned guitar player. <laughs> and so, it, yeah, and so one guitar player that was there, she was there for the uh, Nationwide Guitar Federation Conference that was going on in New York. She heard me play a piece mm. that she <clears throat> plays. She's a college kid, came over. Oh, that's right. Her mother took a picture of it and posted it on the website uh, at the university that the kid goes to. A friend of mine, a friend of Terry's, a mutual friend of ours, emailed me and said, oh, look what I saw on my kid's website. I said, oh yeah, I was just there. So now I'm gonna be going, Chapman School, that's what it is, Chapman School. Wow. So now I'm gonna be giving a lecture at Chapman <laughs> School. But uh, yeah, music is a thing that brings people together. It, it, it certainly is. Wow, that, that, that's a wonderful story. I mean, I mean, you, you just, you, 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 you but a lot of people um, take out their guitars and play in bus stations and subways. Yeah. You did it in an airport on request, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and 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 got a voucher and yeah, and she and held the made Mike a lot of people down. happy. I'm sure. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it's wow. That that's wow. That, that that's an amazing story. Um, so I mean, we're gonna have you back in New York. So that that could happen again. Yeah. You know, I mean. Yeah. You know when you get back, you know in July. But um, you've conducted a lot of guitar ensembles before, mm-hmm. is that right? I have conducted a guitar ensemble here and there. Um, what's fun is to bring the orchestral mentality into the guitar world, and um, guitar players are very much into their sound quality and and using a lot of dynamics. Mm-hmm. So being able to bring the orchestral mentality into a, a, a guitar orchestra is great because then each guitar player really steps it up even more because it's not very often that you get to play in a guitar orchestra unless it's a community run thing, which is very rare, or Mm -hmm. it's a guitar society or you're at a university. So there aren't that many outlets to do that. So when you get to do it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And I mean, judging from that clip that we just saw at the beginning, I mean, I can, it it looked like there was like over 30, 40 guitars in there. Yeah. Well, that is the group called Clave de Sol, G clef, uh, or treble clef. Nice. And it's a guitar orchestra in Havana, Cuba, made up of kids. The only requirement is you have a guitar. There was wow. one kid who didn't have a guitar. Her parents couldn't afford one. And so the father, I want to say this without choking up, the father made her a paper mache guitar. And so she sat in there oh, strumming. Wow. She knew she wasn't really playing, but she was just grinning from ear to ear, knowing that she is now part oh of the group. Gosh. We knew about this uh, at Terry's Kids, and so we brought her a guitar. So oh, what ended oh, up happening oh. was we brought the guitar, <clears throat> she was there, and uh, we played um, for me along with the other guitar players that, that came, other musicians, and then we presented her with the guitar. And I can't tell you, there was not a dry eye in the place that knew what was going on. Oh my gosh, um, I, I can't imagine. It, it was an yeah. amazing feeling. And one thing uh, I gotta tell you is, I, uh, Terry went to Cuba, um, to see this guitar orchestra and I was scheduled to go. At the last minute, I had to cancel. So the next time we went, Terry said, I'm gonna get you. And so we went to this guitar orchestra and he didn't say anything. He knew how much of a musho I am. And so there's over a hundred kids in this guitar orchestra, but only around 25 can rehearse at a time because their rehearsal space is so small. Right, And so these kids were playing from their heart and they're all like 
from the age of maybe eight or nine to like 17 or 18. Wow. And these kids are just playing away. And in Cuba, they basically have nothing. Mm -hmm. But a Cuban's mentality is, as long as they have their grandparents, their kids, and their siblings, a roof over their head and food in their belly and clothes on their back, they're fine. Music is one of their outlets. Music is one of the things that lifts their spirits and gives them uh, hope. And so when they have music, everything else goes by the wayside. Um, so that's why when you saw those still pictures at the beginning of all those kids smiling and laughing, that's because they were involved with music. All yeah. those kids in that guitar orchestra they come from a very, very poor family. Many of them travel miles to come to this rehearsal. But once they're there, everything outside those walls is doesn't exist. Wow. They're inside Oz all of a sudden. So yeah. you, you music can see is a that. beautiful thing. It, and we're it, gonna see much more of that too. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'll just make a comment quick on the um the homemade guitar operation you know um that um i i read that in joshua wells story that he started by putting rubber bands over boxes and plucking yeah. so i mean and look at how he turned out so yeah. i mean you, you never know what yeah. what comes of these things and you know how, uh, that's just wonderful um yeah so we're luck we're we're so happy to have you back here and Thanks. you know i mean i think you've um, actually um, made the transition better than I wrote it in the script here because we we're going to talk about you know affordability and how yeah. that's just so um, difficult for many people mm -hmm. and we're very uh, fortunate that throughout the world and even right here in the US that we have uh, foundations and organizations that help fundraise and make um, these um, experiences possible right. for people who cannot afford them and you know it uh, brings us um, to our second guest here, um, you know, Terry Miller, who runs Terry's Kids, um, is, and yes, <laughs> and he's, it, I mean, he has an artistic charitable program devoted to the arts, and their goal is to bring children together through music. They provide music programming to schools and care facilities throughout, through performances, concerts, clinics, and lessons on a national and international basis. And they're also partnered with uh, San Francisco Study Center, which is a nonprofit organization. So, you know, I mean, that's it's so many wonderful things that uh, they're doing. And I'd, I'd just love to hear more about it. And let's in introduce our second guest here, Terry Miller himself. Terry, welcome. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I, I'm doing great. It, welcome to our show. It's so great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what a great intro with Julio. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's hard not to have a great intro with Julio. Yeah, that's I true. Think, you know, I mean, he's, he's <laughs> just, it, you know, he, he, he's got it all there. And, you know, and you, you have so much to bring today t as well. And we're happy to have you. And um, can you tell us more about uh, Terry's Kids? Sure. We started about 20 years ago. I had been involved with several nonprofits and um, I was seeing sort of a disconnect um, with the funding getting to where it was supposed to go. We, I think we spoke about this earlier. And so I decided to start a true nonprofit. So if someone donates a dollar, the dollar goes to the kids. If someone donates a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars goes to the kids as far as paying for supplies, paper, travel, all that. We have other sponsors that take care of that on the side. So if you make a donation, every dime goes to the kids. So we're kind That's of proud great. of doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. We started originally, it was only music and it was uh, clinics. And so we hosted clinics for about three, four years. And we started to realize it was, it, it was helpful, it was educational, it was musical, but it was sort of a Band-Aid. Uh, the schools, many Title I schools, didn't have music programs or they didn't have the instruments. So we started focusing on that, on implementing music programs in different schools. Wow. So we kind of went that route. And then teachers, music instructors started hearing about it. And then special ed departments started hearing about it and saying, you know, wow. we have a special ed department, but we have no supplies for the kids. And so we started outfitting special ed departments. And, oh, that's um, wonderful. Yeah. And then we started hearing about things internationally. So uh, the Jerusalem Youth Chorus, we brought them over. They did a concert and we did some fundraisers for them up and down the coast, the West Coast. 
And then um, I had been to Cuba a couple times, and there were a couple of children's troops that also needed some support. Mm -hmm. So we started taking people down on trips, and part of the deal with Cuba is they would bring along an extra suitcase of donations because you can't mail anything there, really, mm -hmm. realistically. Yeah. And so we did that, and we've done, oh my gosh, I think we're up to about 24 trips so far. So, wow. you know, helping out these, well, and, and just Julio, to Cuba or just, just, just to Cuba. Yeah. Yeah. We, we oh, have a goodness. Wow. Actually is, it's interesting. We had one scheduled for Israel and, uh, that's mm. obviously that was put on hold. Yeah. So, uh, there's another one, uh, we're working on another town, a very, very small village on the DMZ in Korea. So we're going to be bringing some instruments to them as well, but that'll oh, be, how wonderful. that'll probably be 2024. So, wow. um, yeah. That, that, that's just great. Hey, um, we have yeah. another clip from sure. um, one of your events that we'd like to show uh -oh. right now. So uh, let's take a look at that. Okay. Looks like so much fun. Oh, it was a blast! <laughs> yeah. Oh, it took me right back. Awesome. It, so you know, it really reminds oh. me of the taste. Like when I was studying um, piano performance, um, I had to take some guitar class, and I, I, I think I remember how to play like D, G, and A. Um, but you know, Julio, you said that like all I need is a guitar. So yeah. like you know, I mean, the next time I, I'm just gonna bring the guitar and show up and um, you know. And I'll play what I can, but I mean, that's it, it, just—it it seems so fun. I just want to join in with you guys. There. You just can't um, help but have a warm heart after seeing this. You can yeah. have the worst day, but the vibe and the energy and the yeah. love that is mm -hmm. in that room mm -hmm. when yes. you're hearing these people play, all the people that we uh, that Terry and I brought down there, their jaws were just dropping and they were just smiling. Some people, mm -hmm. like myself, were just crying because. You saw so much innocence and so much happiness in an environment that they're not happy. Mm -hmm. So it, it was great. Yeah. It was wow. it was great. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a reach oh, out. How wonderful! And remind us where was that? That that was in Cuba. Yeah, that's Clava de Sol. It's a two hundred piece children's guitar orchestra. It's headed up by two two. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's headed up by the, these uh -huh. these two heroes of mine, uh, Nadia and Yaima. Who, by the way, Julio, I don't know if you knew this or not. They teach five days a week and they don't get paid. 
They don't get paid? No. Wow. It's all volunteer. That's something? Wow. I know. I know. Wow. It's a, it's a full-time job. And they teach all day. It's eight hours a day. And the hard work that they've wow. been doing. Oh, it's it's unbelievable. I know. I know. Wow. Yeah. yeah so, so when we got down there, I, I like Julio mentioned earlier, he wasn't able to make that trip. And I heard Clava de Sol. And I'm like, oh, this is a... That's a that's a glove to put on right there. So Julio came down. I said, "You're in charge." So Julio runs Clava del Sol for us. We go down there with our guests. Wow! And you know, we make up a little audience, and then you know, I Cecil B. DeMille do my horrible iPhone filming, <laughs> as you can see. I need to get that stabilization app. Yeah. So anyway, oh, yeah. but uh, yeah, Julio, if you want to expand on Clava del Sol, uh, just. Well, the Clave de Sol has been around for a long time. A long time, a um, long time, yeah. They, their rehearsal space is in this residential community that is, you can definitely tell it's in the poorer part of town. Yeah. And uh, like I said, kids come from, from miles, from all over the place. Some of them don't even have a case for their guitar. They're just, you know, carrying the side of a pillowcase wow. or just carrying it like that, you know. And um, <clears throat> they basically spend the whole time there. When we go, it's usually very humid, very hot there, mm -hmm. and there's no air conditioning in this room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so you saw how many people were in there. Oh, yeah. These kids do not complain about, oh, it's too hot, I wow. can't play. Oh, yeah. no, let me at that guitar, I got to play. Wow. You know, it's part of their blood, part of their mm -hmm. DNA. And for them, like I said before, it, it, it gives them hope. It gives mm -hmm. them something positive in their life that they can expand on. Mm -hmm. Um, and because music is very right brain and all their other stuff in school is left brain, it gives their left side of the brain a chance to decompress while they're playing music. Wow. Also with music, it creates a lot of those alpha and delta waves that we need when we sleep to get really good sleep. So it's helping them um, mentally and emotionally without them even knowing it. Mm -hmm. So. It, it, it's a great pro. It's a great program. Mm -hmm. The two ladies there, they're angels. They are. The, they are. To me, they're even wow. bigger angels after I find out that they've been volunteering right. this whole time. And they work really hard. Very hard. They make wow. all the arrangements. They yeah. rehearse all the kids. They write out all the music, you know, copies for them. Um, and they're like two professional moms. Mm -hmm. They don't come across as teachers. Hey, they Julio, I have to moms. ask you about yeah. this. Was this just an everyday event, or was this like a special event that we were watching? We were at just at one of their rehearsals, <laughs> yeah. and they just did uh, That a was just their concert. normal jam-out rehearsal? Yeah, yeah it's, five, it, it's five oh, days wow. a week. Yeah. Uh, wow, okay. I, I mean, I know that you had mentioned that before, but I was just thinking, I was like, maybe this was special, but I mean, that that was just every yeah. day for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, and wow. the cool thing is, How wonderful. Terry and I have been there now so many times especially terry that we've seen some of these kids grow up mm -hmm. now we don't do formal presentations like okay here's your guitar blah 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 because it comes across a little bit like they're you know uh, a needy th situation and yeah. it makes them feel very uncomfortable so they're we usually give it to the directors mm -hmm. all the supplies and the directors they dole it out as needed these kids are smart we've been there a few times and so a few of them that are older had put two and two together. I said, oh, these nice. two gringos are coming down. Oh, we're going to get new stuff, you know? <laughs> so it, it's been a beautiful thing for everybody involved. Yeah. That's great. And, you know, um, I understand um, you have a, a relationship with uh, the Jerusalem Youth Chorus. Yes. And uh, we have a little clip that uh, about them that we'd like to show now. Great. Although this wave, wave is stringing up 
Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, words can't describe it just how wonderful, <laughs> just yeah, amazing that is. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, the message, I mean, the, the singing and the whole music and video production of it. I mean, you had a lot of investment go into that and so many wonderful things come out of it. And yeah. wow. Well, congrats to all of you on that. And that's yeah, they're it, they're it, absolutely wonderful, and they're they're pros. There there was not pitch correction. There was no melody. There was no pitch correction on oh, the recording. I can, I can tell. They're live. Yeah. They sound yeah. They sound better. They're phenomenal. Wow. <coughs> yeah, when I know. They came, yeah. When they came here to the Bay Area and performed, um, they performed in this really cool church mm-hmm. and. To hear that sound yeah. in a church, mm-hmm. oh, it! Yeah. People were on their feet. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just so amazing. It was a yeah, it was really funny. magical moment. Uh, yeah, we we brought thirty five of them over and we we spread them around in homes. So you know, oh, wow. my wife, God bless her, she's like, wait, we have how many kids staying at our house? So we had fifteen, and uh, wow, yeah, wow. yeah, they all lo- they loved my dog. 
But yeah, it was it was nuts. They were on the floor and we were rehearsing there, and it was just an absolute blast. So if if I could briefly, um, yeah. what I really love about them is um, when we go overseas, um, when things get political, things get messed up, and. In Cuba, um, as I mentioned before, it, 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 there's there's two sides to everything, but usually those two sides are n- not necessarily getting along so well, and so we stay completely apolitical. We just will not do that. We're there for the kids, period. That's and great. the Jerusalem Youth Choir, uh, it's the same thing. It's five. It's Arab, uh, 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 Jews, Israelis, Palestinians, and Christians, uh, equal distribution and if uh, for the kids singing and if you come in and you bring anything up there's the door you're gone and nice. so they yeah, they totally <laughs> have it figured out but what's really fascinating i found out when i went there um <clears throat> is there's factions uh be whatever those factions are you know political factions that are because they're they're getting you know some notoriety and everybody wants wants to put their brand on them. It's like, oh well, they sing for us, or they sing for us, and so they've lost thousands of dollars in funding because they won't do that. Yeah. They're not gonna. They're not gonna put no. this stamp, this country, this political affiliation. They won't do it. It's like we're no, nope, we're we're here to sing and that, spread the message great. that way. Yeah, I think they should play this at the UN. And like, that would let, be really neat. You know yeah. what? Let let these guys know. It's like, hey, you know, maybe, you know, just yeah. focus on one thing at a time, and you know, and what like what's important. Yeah, and so. you know, you, you see a lot of these things televised now too, like at the UN and all that, and like many of them like have like some sort of like big opening. And right. I, right. I I can't remember where there was a chorus that opened to one of those events a few years ago. I think maybe it was the Democratic debate or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like a whole chorus like done through digital zoom because we were still in quarantine at the time sure. and all that but like it was the neatest thing ever and i think it set the right tone just to yeah. show that people were together and That's right. and yeah i mean that 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 yeah that would be great um yeah. yeah you know i mean you know a great opener to any event and to just any community even i mean they're, they're mm-hmm. just wonderful and you know yeah. you, you have just the right message there for mm-hmm. everyone, you know, at the end yeah. of the day, you know, I mean, we're, we're just, um, you know, people having a great experience and learning a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, Terry and I have a mutual friend. He's the, <clears throat> his name, Dr. Shelley Bird. He's the Dean of the Mu- Frost School of Music at the University of Miami. Oh yeah. And he has a saying that music is the mortar of humanity. And it's so true. It doesn't matter from what socioeconomic situation you come from. It doesn't matter who you vote for, who you love, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. When you hear something like this, it's going to touch you. Mm-hmm. You know, we all bleed the same color blood. And so mm-hmm. it doesn't matter politically where you come from. When you listen to this, it kind of brings us all together. So um, I've always been in awe of what Terry's been able to do. And, um, and uh, I love the guy to death for what he does. So. You, you guys have done so much here. Um, well, it's it's not it's not a solo act. There's a no, lot of people oh, involved. No. Yeah, the, the head team. the head of our board, Leslie O'Brien. Uh, she's been she's in a couple of photos here and there, but uh, she has gone on every one of my trips to Cuba, and she's never taken a dime. She's worked for my nonprofit for twenty years. She's never taken a dime. She'll even make an occasional donations. She's absolutely wonderful. So, oh, wonderful. you know, so it, you you can't do something like this alone. You know, wow. like Shelly Berg is on staff, a guitarist, Brian Nova, who we bring sometimes down to Cuba. He's on staff. Julio's on staff. Um, so it's, it's it not a... It takes a village. It does. It's not a solo act. So, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. And none of us get well, paid because well, the way my payment is when I go to Clave de Sol hmm? and I see a little munchkin playing a guitar and just smiling. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. You can't put a price tag it, on that. It, it no, makes you, you feel like a million bucks. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Without really a million does. bucks. But right. you don't exactly. need a million yeah. bucks when you feel oh, that way. Oh, and there was a picture in there of a little girl that was kissing me on the cheek. That oh, little yeah. girl has Down syndrome. <laughs> So the oh, first wow. time that I went down with Terry, we were bringing supplies to that guitar orchestra, and I was on the wing, and their salsa band was doing their sound check, and she was in the front just dancing around. Mm. She saw me on the wing, 
grabbed my hand, pulled me out there, and wanted to dance with me. Aww. Every time I've gone there ever since, I've seen her and gives her a big hug. And oh, um, it, it's just it's such a touching situation to go down there. I look yeah. forward to it every time. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, just um, because we're so limited on time here, sure. Um, I'd like to just move ahead because you, you do you do so many other types of events too, and we have another fun clip that we'd like to show right now. Great. Havana yes. Compass Dance. I love those guys. Oh my gosh. First time I heard them, I just I didn't know what I was going to. And it's like these models come out with drumsticks and they start playing on chairs. I'm like, what is it? And they are and that's a fraction of what they do. Yeah. They're unbelievable. That was yeah. better than Stomp. Oh, it's it's <laughs> Yeah, they're yeah, and it, it's interesting too because they were the first group in Cuba where women were allowed to pr play percussion. Yep. It, oh it's, wow! Yeah, it's and it's it's not a law. It's not like it's a law, but it's just kind of a thing. Yeah. You know, it's just like oh no 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 no. That's you know the men they played, and it's like these women came out and like uh, no no they yeah no, they play too. It's great, yeah. Aren't they fun? Oh my gosh! It's, yeah. it's great because it's a combination of mm -hmm. flamenco and Cuban dance and mm -hmm. African. Yeah. So there's this big melting pot of dance that they do, and it's it's incredible yeah oh. incredible. it's a lot of fun it's a you, lot of you've fun. done so much and um you know i understand that uh you take donations yes and uh you we can go to uh studycenter.org mm -hmm. slash terry's kids to make a donation here and oh yeah and here's the website so we we have this wonderful picture here of you in Havana. Great. And right great. down at the bottom here is that donate button. So, you know, if you like what you see, you want to help out and keep this going, you know, smash That's that great. button Thank and you. send your donation. Yeah. And what? Wow. This is so wonderful. So fun. Um, yeah. So, um, but you've, you've, th this is just the tip of the iceberg of things that you've done, isn't it? I mean, th th there's so many other events that we've right. done over the years. How, how how many years have you guys been doing this? I, I started it. Hulu, you've been on board about 15. I started it about 20 years ago. And what what, what we do, too, is uh, we affiliate with, with other nonprofits, like the Good Neighbor Foundation. We affiliate with them. Um, there was uh, every once in a while, there will be someone that will have an event they want to do, but they need a 501c3 number. They need to run it through a foundation, and they don't have one. And getting a 501c3 it's it's costly, it's time consuming, but because we're under the stu study study center's umbrella, we can do it overnight. Mm -hmm. So we help facilitate <laughs> all all sorts of stuff. So uh, yeah. could, could I say uh, one thing? Uh, yeah. Uh, throw some some spotlight more on, on Terry. Aside from him being so philanthropic and such a great guy, he's also a monster bass player. This man has been playing bass. Uh, let's see. He's played bass with the Doobie Brothers. He's worked with Prince. He's uh, oh, wow. performed with Steve Miller, uh, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, this man has toured the world with big major bands. He was touring bass player with a uh, uh, Zach Brown band for a while. So he's not just a great businessman in music. He's also an incredible bass player. I play bass also, but I think of it this way. I play bass. Terry is a bass player. 
And he, he, he's just as phenomenal a bass player as he is in his philanthropic uh, uh, ventures. So um, he's wow. he's not just a, a businessman. He's an aunt's awesome bass player. That's And uh, I love seeing him play. So. Yeah, not, nothing like a musician to understand how... Oh yeah! What, what musicians' yeah. needs are. That's and, well, I think that's, that's true. That's amazing yeah. credentials, Terry. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the greatest music producers of all time. All of them are musicians. Mm. You know. Yeah. It's, they, yeah. Yeah, they, that's wonderful. Yeah, there's so many. Well, I think yeah, all of us here at uh, virtual concert halls and progressive musicians and are all musicians and most of us pianists. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, but ma many instruments. It, it's just. You know, it's, it's just a wonderful thing when you have all musicians here. And, um, wow, congrats to you all. Um, I We're starting to get uh, short on time here. So I, I'd just like to ask uh, Terry and Julio if maybe, maybe you had like some words of wisdom to offer uh, aspiring young musicians or some advice that you'd like to share. Um, what I tell young musicians uh, when they're playing their instrument <clears throat> is that you don't make notes, you make music. You don't play in a mm. black and white TV, you make HD color sound. Meaning, you need to play in such a way to make the person feel something. Also, another thing that I tell kids is that when they go out and they're nervous, really, you know, that's all their ego talking. That's because they want to make sure that the other person is pleased and that they're doing really well and then, they, you know, everything goes right. But that's undue pressure on kids. If the kid goes out there and says, I'm just going to go out and have fun like I know how to have fun. I'm just going to play. If you like it, great. If not, oh well. I'm going to be happy doing what I do. Kids usually do a lot better than that. I'll leave you with this. Wonderful. With all the stuff that's going on in society right now, kids need music more than ever. Mm -hmm. um, Indeed. It, it will help them so much more with their mindfulness uh, and so forth. So anyway, those three things is what I harp on. Oh, uh, that's, that's just wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's that's truly inspirational. Terry's probably got some great words of guys, wisdom. It, I, 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 I just I have one one main thing. And it's, Go for it. you know, it's, it's uh, uh, timely is I tell kids that uh, students that when you're learning, everything's online and it's wonderful because you can, you can pick up anything you want. But but turn off the computer, turn off the TV, turn off your phone. <laughs> You've got to play with other musicians. You like I can practice all week, ten hours a day. But if I play with other musicians, good musicians, for two hours, I'll have learned twice as much. So, so you you've got to keep it real. And fortunately, I think it's I think that's pretty still pretty strong. Mm -hmm. You know, I think mm -hmm. people people have kind of had it with you know the the whole trying to connect you know via the internet. So yeah. musically, you know, because you, you can do that. You can play with other people on the Internet, but it's just, you know, you, you need the human exchange. It makes a difference, you, in my opinion. You do. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. These are wonderful words of wisdom and <laughs> just very inspirational uh, things that you've all done. And we're so happy to have had this today. Um, in the time that we have left, I'd just like to remind everyone about the guitar ensemble that we have that Julio's directing. In fact, um, could I trouble our tech wizards to put the website back up for a second here? And um, we have the website here at progressivemusicians.com and if you go to Laureate Ensembles at Carnegie, you see we have many ensembles coming up this year, including at Castanet oh, Square. That. But we have wow. the guitar ensemble and the deadline to apply is November 15th. Mm -hmm. And here's all the information that you need about the auditions. Just send us your best video. And then we will have live auditions in February you know, with Julio as the judge and clinician. You get to work with them at the auditions and will be streamed live on the broadcast. We have all of our regulations here and all the information that you want. And here's the application and a schedule for New York and oh and excerpts for the auditions to prepare it, it, it's all there and oh and this guy here some information <laughs> here so um, it, we, we just have all that there and you can uh, contact us through um, via email or in any of our platforms you know, uh, the email is a director at progressive musicians.com apply by November 15th 
and um, then we will get back to you and we will have a great time um, getting this whole process going. Uh, Julio, did you have anything else you wanted to say about the guitar ensemble? Um, I hope a lot of people apply. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's going to be a be. unique situation where you can actually play in Carnegie Hall. Exactly. And I can tell you from personal experience, it's like no other stage you will walk on. It 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 is. It, he's he's got that down, and the the, the 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 couldn't have said that better myself. And there's. Uh, this will be slightly different than some of the clips that we've seen. I mean, this will be mostly classical music, but you get to come into New York for three days and rehearse with the maestro himself. And we're also going to be taking a tour of Juilliard and uh, oh, McManus School of Music. I'm glad you said that. Yes. Oh. So there, we're going to be doing some there stuff. There will be You're New York things there to do just playing. as part just... of that. Yeah. And then it culminates at Carnegie Hall and you get to walk away there with your performance package the medal the booklet the the certificate um oh the digital video file and um a whole bunch of other greatness that comes with that mm -hmm. well um we have a very short clip that just shows our season that I'd like to just jump to if we can enjoy that for a moment. Perform on our galas at Carnegie Hall. Our new season of auditions for classical musicians is now available. Performance opportunities for students, young professionals, and seasoned artists. Perform as a soloist or chamber ensemble at Carnegie Hall. Form a concerto with the New York chamber players at Carnegie Hall. Composers submit their works to be premiered at Carnegie Hall. New this season, laureate ensembles at Carnegie Hall. Audition to be part of a three-day intensive workshop directed by some of the world's master musicians, culminating with a performance at Carnegie Hall. Audition live from the comfort of your own home. Get live evaluations from expert judges and expand your online presence through our international internet broadcasts. Additional award and performance opportunities are also available. Visit our website for full details. Don't miss out on these wonderful opportunities to advance as a musician and perform on a world-renowned stage. We look forward to hearing your performances. Oh, it's going to be a fun season here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're just about out of time here, so I, I would just like to remind all of our viewers, if you'd like to make a donation to Terry's Kids, uh, that you can go to studycenter.org slash Terry's Kids and make a donation, and that would help so many people out there. Um, Terry, thank you for all the support that you give to uh, to musicians around the world and kids um, to better their educations. It's Thank you. truly been a, a big inspiration getting to know your organization and getting to know you here on this broadcast as well. Thank you. Julio, uh, thank you for being here again. You know, we're going to have you many more times and um, it's, it's just great. Um, if you want to know more about uh, working with Julio and the guitar ensemble, you can go to progressivemusicians.com apply by November 15th. We're live here every day at 12 p.m. Eastern with new programs that portray many of our artists, past participants, teachers, and present new and unique topics in the field of music and education. We're streaming on all platforms, and we, too, have a wealth of supporters that just wow. support us for the love of supporting us. And we couldn't do that without our village here. It, it, there's just so much that goes into that, including our broadcast team that we have behind the scenes. And it, it, all these cards and all these visuals uh, don't just happen by themselves. We have two tech wizards behind the scenes today. There's our whole team there. But you know, thank you, Ante and Jennifer, back behind the scenes for keeping the train engine going on this. And uh, who am I forgetting here? Uh, that's... Oh, uh, private teachers, you know, private teachers do a lot for very little or almost nothing as well. And we, not, none of that could happen without the private teachers and without dedicated families that make the sacrifices to pay for experiences. And it, it, it all just comes full circle uh, when you see some of these events as to, you know, how the investments and the dedication paid off. And, you know, it, it's been great having you both here today. Thank you again. Before we sign off, 
I would just love to hear the guitar ensemble chiming out one more time. <laughs> I, 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 I can't leave without seeing that one more time. So we'll, we'll end with that. And we'll, we'll leave our audience with that. So on that note, we'll say goodbye and have a great afternoon, everybody. Great. Thank you, James. Bye-bye. Thanks, James. Thanks, Terry. Thank you.